The crisis caused by the coronavirus has brought many countries to take drastic measures of social distancing. In my work with Jean-Noël Barraud from HEC Paris and my colleague Basile Grassi from Bocconi, we have estimated the negative impact of the coronavirus on the GDP of several European countries. So we start by computing the fraction of the labor force that cannot work due to the implementation of social distancing measures, and we do it for each sector of the economy. So we identify three channels through which the coronavirus restricts people's ability to work. First, several countries, including Italy, have decided to shut down some uh, non-essential sectors of the economy. This is the case for bars and restaurants or museums. Second, countries decided to close schools. So we take into account that some people cannot work anymore because they have to take care of their children. Finally, several countries have put in place lockdowns, like Italy and France, meaning that some people cannot reach their workplace anymore. We assume that in the case of absolute lockdowns, only workers using a computer connected to the internet can continue working from home. Here, we explore data from the European Community Survey on the use of computers by the labor force in each industry and country. For instance, a lot of employees can work from home using a computer in the consulting sector, but not in construction. There is also differences across countries. For instance, only 50% of the workforce uses computers in Italy, while in Norway or Denmark, it's more than 70%. In the second part, we use a model of production networks in order to estimate the total effect of this supply shock on the economy for different countries. For Italy, for instance, we find that six weeks of social distancing lead to a decline in annual GDP of 6.6%. Then, with our model, we also estimate the impact of the shock in each sector. We find large variations. Interestingly, we find that several sectors located upstream in the supply chain are among those suffering the most, such as mining or utilities. Finally, our model also allows us to inform policymakers about the potential benefit in the future of phasing out social distancing measures selectively for some age groups or sectors. We find that the benefit per worker of phasing out social distancing is relatively stable by age group but varies strongly across sectors.